And joining me live via Skype to discuss the unfortunate crash and the ongoing war in Ukraine is a lecturer of politics and international relations at Liverpool Hope University, Dr. Bola Didiron. Good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. So I want to get your thought first on this crash before we move um, into just broadly into the war. Uh, what, what's your reaction to this, especially um, as the war continues in that country? He was also, the interim ministry is in charge of the police and security in, in Ukraine. It's an unfortunate tragedy uh, because uh, not only the interior minister was killed, uh, I think there were some children who were, who were also killed in the crash. Now, obviously, we don't know the cause of the crash, and as you mentioned in your report, uh, there are investigations going on. Uh, but this is, uh, this is a, a significant loss for the Ukrainians. Um, of course, uh, as you rightly mentioned, the, Ukrainian, uh, the, the Minister of Interior is in charge of internal security, so may not necessarily have much to do with um, may, his death may not really impact on the offensive that is going on or the defense that had the war front, but it uh, it does if if indeed the uh, the investi investigation into the crash shows that there are um, suspicious elements to uh, to the crash, then it should be a cause of concern. Um, but I think that Ukraine would not. not uh, really real from, from this crash because uh, the chief of police has been appointed as an interior minister immediately. Um, but I do not see how uh, there, there would be any other feeling that, that other than tragedy because uh, of not only the lives lost, but also the lives of the children lost. Mm. Uh, let's move now broadly into the war. Um, the attack in Dnipro has, has got a lot of reactions from people around the world, especially because of the level of civilian casualty. Um, we had the Prime Minister of Netherlands, Mark Rutte, referencing that particular attack and then promising um, that his country would send a Patriot missile um, system to Ukraine. Do you think that that particular incident will become a rallying point for um, world leaders to be, continue to send weapons um, supplies to, to Ukraine? No, not necessarily. I don't think that, I mean, as tragic as that attack over the weekend was and the number of civilian lives that, that have died, that died in that particular attack, I don't think that it changes much. Um, and especially, I don't, certainly don't think that it would move countries that were not initially interested in sending weapons or providing more uh, security uh, weapons uh, to, to Ukraine. Uh, the, the UN report showed recently that more than 7,000, at least conservative numbers, of civilians have died in Ukraine. So these are not this 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 recent attack, as as tragic as it, as it was, as unfortunate as it was. I don't think that it really moves the needle uh, significantly. Uh, I also, however, see that countries are beginning to hard and step out of. Uh, the, out, out of uh, their uh, historical reluctance to send more heavy weaponry mm. to Ukraine. Uh, I, so think that I, I was just going to ask you that. I, ha I had to jump in because I was going to ask you if his, his posture, that's um, 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 Prime Minister Makute's posture, because we've heard about bickering among world leaders earlier about how long the, the weapon supply should continue, f f um, continue for. But this posture by Makute, do you think that that's an indication that perhaps um, world leaders are still poised to continue to send um, um, weapons to Ukraine? Um, sorry, I didn't get that properly. There was a bit of a... Uh, a break in transmission. Could you repeat the question again? I was Please, asking sorry. you if that particular posture um, by Makrute um, is an indication that world leaders are poised to continue to send um, weapons to um, Ukraine. Definitely. I, I think not, not only from Netherlands there were the Patriot missiles. I think that the UK also sent uh, and committed to sending Challenger 2 tanks to Ukraine. And that would be the first example of uh, um, Western tanks, ammo tanks being sent to, to Ukraine. And that would be a shift, a significant shift in the sort of, the sort of weaponry that have been offered to Ukraine so far. I think the, the, the real issue here is that our countries are now recognizing that Ukraine has an opportunity to win, but also that the initial uh, logistical problems that Russia was having, having 
that is beginning is, is set to overcome them. The Russian military industrial complex is at full swing. Uh, weapons are being manufactured at, at, at good pace. Ammunitions are being restocked. Mm -hmm. And Russia is effectively uh, preparing for a spring offensive. And so what the, the, the West is recognizing is that it has to step up its military deliveries to Ukraine if there is any chance for the Ukrainians to uh, uh, to meet Russia at uh, at the battlefield with equal uh, capacity. So I think that it is a recognition of not only strategically how this war is playing out, uh, but if the West is going to, as, as much as possible, stab off defeat of the Ukrainians, then it needs more weapons to do that. And I think that that's what we're seeing is a recognition of All that. Right. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, lecturer of Politics and International Relations at the Liverpool Hope University, Dr. Bola Didiro. Thank you very much.